Hi, welcome to my garden. Today on Greenhouse Talk, gardening tips, we're going to talk about the birds and the bees. No, really we are. <laughs> I've been asked several questions the last couple days. One, self-pollinating plants. Two, about baby squash. Three, about peppers and pruning, the controversy there. And four, transplanting, to tear the roots or not to tear the roots. That is the question. So come on, let's take a look. You may be surprised to learn that there are a lot of vegetables that don't need birds or bees or butterflies or anything like that to pollinate. Peas, beans, soybeans. There are some lagoons like the Scarlet Runner that absolutely need a pollinator. Tomatoes and peppers are definitely self-pollinators. But sunflowers and dandelions, they can go either way. If there are no bees around, they will self-pollinate, but they don't mind having the bees. If you want a garden without bees, you can just plant leafy things, lettuces, cabbages, that sort of thing. Carrots don't need any pollination to grow, but like right here, we want this to go to seed and it will need a pollinator. I was asked, I got little baby squash, but they're not doing anything. Yeah, they look like little baby squash and they're edible, so are the flowers, but that's really the female flower. You need the male flower, which is on this stem right here, and then you need bees or butterflies or some other insect to, cry, to pollinate them. You can help them along. There's a couple different ways. Pinch off this male flower, pull back the petals, and then insert. Or you can use a Q-tip and get the pollen off from the male and do the same thing. Sometimes you get the female flower before the male comes out. Sometimes you get the male flower before the female comes out. Sometimes it takes a little while for them to sync up, but at some point you will get squash. Okay, now here's the controversy. Peppers. To prune or not to prune? Here's one right here. We took the top off and look, it forked really, really nicely. Then we got other ones we haven't done anything to. So, it's kind of up to you. It's all preference. I've done it both ways, and I've had really good success both ways. Now the other controversy, when you're planting something that you've started, do you tear the roots or do you leave the roots alone? Okay, this goes back to squash as an example. Some people will tell you it's just as fast to plant seeds in the garden when it's warm enough. If you start them inside or in a greenhouse, and you go to transplant, and you disturb those roots very much, you can shock them. You can even kill them. So the squash that we started, we didn't do anything to the roots. Now on a tomato, the entire stem will root, so it doesn't really hurt if you disturb those roots. Some people say you have to rough up the roots on everything, but that's not exactly true. So you gotta be careful what you're roughing up the roots on. I pretty much leave the roots alone on everything. Well, the greenhouse is starting to get kind of bare. I've got a ride coming for these, and then we're gonna be out of stuff. But we're gonna be in the garden. We've got everything planted out, Oh yeah, since I made that rule, we gotta plant something every time we come to the garden, I gotta figure out something to plant this afternoon. I really hope you got something out of these tips. You can do this too. And until next time, remember, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and God bless you. Come on, let's plant. Let's go plant garden.